We put uh, £700,000 from our public health budget into maintaining the excellent Reach Out programme, which helps long-term unemployed people get back into work. And we're putting extra money, £200,000, to establishing an economic development unit to attract additional investment and jobs to Wirral. A significant proportion of savings in these proposals, some £5 million, come from the transforming Wirral Council to make it look leaner and more fit for purpose. Um, and part of that is a substantial savings from the shared services agreements that was entered into the Cheshire West and Chester Council. <coughs> the workforce, Mr Mayor, I'm proud that we recognise that our staff are our best asset. And although we do intend to make savings in this area, we do not agree with the party opposite that we should cease to completely fund all full-time trade union reps. I believe a sign of a progressive organisation is to make sure that the workforce is properly protected by the duly uh, recognised trade unions. Thank you. 
talk to see what we can do about lobbying. The Sigur Mellet talks about shifting money from <coughs> need and talk about business growth and new house building. And since in our area, new house building is taking off, well, at least in some parts, but the business growth is something we're working on. It's difficult to see that we're getting that extra money to fill the gap. So I'm happy to make a particular case on behalf of Wirral. And would Council, the Labour leader for this today, talks about the government asking to look at the words of Ed Balls. I know it may be painful, but uh, on the Andrew Marr show, Ed Balls said it's going to be tough under the next Labour government. We're going to have to finish the job that George Osborne has not managed to do. So I think that there will be, certainly, an early election is, whatever the result is, a period of representations and difficulty for all of the councils who we will do our best to cover. But I have noticed that the LGA, in <coughs> recent comments, has expressed some satisfaction that further cuts went introduced in the latest round. I want to turn to the discounts. We considered the issue of the discounts. Our point is to avoid two council tax rises, one, the general rise affecting everybody, and we recognise that the discount ending scheme is a separate rise, a different rise, and we are trying to put our efforts into avoiding the general rise and therefore to take the government's freeze money, which seems wrong for us to decline that money. So I'll be very much for small things. In the detail of consultation, school crossing control. Well, the school school must meet for late January. I think closing that option off down and insisting that the school should pay up in some form or other is wrong. There are 1,916 people that seem to support that option, but when you add the other figures up, rather more or against. But the issue there is that question was rolled into lots of other issues affecting schools about uh, various services and welfare services and crossing controls. It wasn't a specific question about crossing controls, and I think that should be dropped because of that aspect of the consultation is not being conducted that well. On the street lighting, uh, well, they seem to have a weekly story of which lights are on and off. And the public don't know which ones are supposed to be on, which ones are off. We suggest an investment in technology to control the weather rather than having this switching things off here there, and everywhere, or alternatively, whatever the case may be. On the children's centres, well, out of 4,654 people who took part, 1936 people said that they found it completely unacceptable. They were established, and the paper was given to the scrutiny committee, which had some further information in, but we don't think that detail is developed enough yet for the council to agree to it now. Finally, I turn to the government's <coughs> issue. I looked at Warrington, which is the mayor for 30 weeks at 1.5. I looked at Nosey, which pays a statutory rate for 30 weeks, Sefton for 30 weeks, a statutory rate. And I looked at, uh, at Oldham at 1.5 for 30 weeks. Same side, 30 weeks. I looked at other councils and I said, what is the balance? In our case, we concluded that the balance should be on this occasion in favour of the council taxpayer and that we understand the feeling of the trade unions and their members, but we believe that we have to make an active change to the system now. So there are details in our amendment list from there, and we want to see some investment in the capital program when that's released. When it appears, there will be substantial sell off this year. So we get money to be invested in more 20 mile zones, more maintenance work, and the efficiency of the street lighting. So we have produced a detailed comment. I believe that uh, if I commend it to the council, I know which way the road's going, but we think the street lighting, the school crossing control, the things that we shouldn't throw out. Thank you. Seeing that, We, we can have one debate on the two items and then two individual votes, but that's up to the council. It's not up to me. I'm going to the constitution. <coughs> it's up. Mr. Mayor, can I make a suggestion to a um, to suspend the relevant standing order so we can have two uh, two amendments, one debate, and two votes at the end. Is that agreed by council?
you would certainly have reached, uh, have got all the words right, but actually in terms of the detail and the substance behind it, it isn't there. But as I say in this, as we say in this resolution, it's in there, I have real concerns and this council should have real concerns, the lack of control and direction and good governance about the Navalis project, about their ability to achieve anything. And in, in fact, Mr. Mayor, in a way, it's worse than uh, being aspirational to bit, sort of making up as you go along the type of approach. And that's the, that, Mr. Mayor, trust me, is a recipe for chaos. And given so much depends on this transformational change, uh, it seems that the Labour Party, not, not, not just that they handled this, but seem totally unprepared to listen and totally unprepared to act. Now, whether that's because they're being told something else by somebody else, or they think they know it all about how to deliver these successful change portfolios, I don't know. But my guess is the Labour Party locally don't know a lot about that. And then finally, Mr. Matt, the point we're making is the Labour Party locally clearly haven't thought this through. They, are, they must be unaware of the impact they're having and the misery they're keeping on the public in terms of what they're seeking to do with their local decisions that they are taking. And we believe that the council should refer these proposals back and give the cabinet the task of looking at the proposals again to make sure that rather than the usual punches of direct increases in council tax, keeping all this ring on pensioners and the stealth taxes that they're introducing, they should take this back and have another go to the matters. Quite frankly, as it stands at the moment, it just won't do. <coughs> We are all in good debate and it was Councillor Harley who was first to speak. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will bear in mind the comments that you made about timing. I only want to talk about one issue, and that is an issue raised by Councillor Davis about our representation as the government and how we should be preparing ourselves. And of course, I refer to what my colleague Councillor Gilchrist said. I think it should be a priority of this council to, in fact, lobby whichever party is in power, and we're moving very rapidly to the time when the people are going to decide who's going to run this country for the following five years. Um, and believe it or not, and I believe it, the, the economy of the country wants to be transformed because it's different in the country. They will have the same problems. Maybe they've got an answer, who knows, depending on who it is, but nevertheless, for a time, and it would be a very important time for people in this borough. Um, the policies will basically be the same unless we can lobby and so on and persuade our colleagues in parties, our colleagues in government, our colleagues in parliament to actually say there is a fair system. There are lots of MPs, for example, who represent the South East of London, and obviously they will want for their constituents. That's what they're elected for. The MPs are elected to represent the so I would suggest to the leader of the council that in fact the priority should be the work of this council should be to discuss this. I would think when we have meetings in the floor of the building, for example, one of them should be devoted to that. We should look for, we should look for, we should look for practical and actual things that we can do as an action plan uh, in the next months. And in particular, what exactly it is we are asking for, and how we persuade our colleagues in the South East, and there's a very great number of them throughout the of London, that in fact, somehow or other, we, we have got a program, a suggestion that is fair to everybody in this country, but especially to us in the world. And I feel that in fact, um, whatever's been done now, this is a key time in the next 18 months, and we have to give that absolute priority. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It is less than time than you have. Thank you. <coughs> Council Pashnak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, even, even the terrible financial climate uh, we find ourselves in, Mr. Mayor, our budget has listened to what people tell us. I'm sorry to agree. 
agreed that because obviously the party of the don't listen to that, you don't believe we they have to we can listen. Mr Mayor, with no reductions in winter maintenance, both car park and charges of country parks, all for their job. <laughs> Let's hope the party opt for Mr Mayor take the opportunity in the proposed scrutiny review, looking at all aspects of car park and charges across the world, which is the right way to proceed with this subject. Mr Mayor, we've listened and a full package of parks and garden maintenance will not be taken, allowing to retain the upkeep of bowling green features and other important open spaces on Wirral, which, in light of the recent storms, I would suggest is vital. Mr Mayor, to ensure we make the most of